Welcome to today's video about early signs of nerve cell damage. Your feet are sending distress signals right now. Most people miss them completely until it's too late. There's a silent epidemic affecting one in every 14 adults over 45, and the warning signs appear in something you do every single day, walking. Cleveland Clinic research confirms that between 5 and 7% of people in this age group are living with peripheral neuropathy, nerve damage that's quietly destroying their mobility, independence, and quality of life. The frightening part? It starts years before you feel the classic symptoms of numbness or burning pain. Your walking pattern changes first. It's your body's early warning system trying desperately to protect damaged nerves that can no longer communicate properly with your brain. Neurologists at leading medical centers have documented nine specific changes in how people walk when nerve damage begins. These aren't subtle medical mysteries. They're observable patterns backed by published research from Oxford Academic's medical journal Brain, studies from the National Institute of Neurological Disorders, and peer-reviewed data from multiple university hospitals. Today, I'm breaking down each warning sign so you can catch nerve damage while there's still time to do something about it. All right, let's jump straight into the early warning signs of nerve cell damage, beginning with the first one, walking noticeably slower. The first change happens without you realizing it. Research published in the journal Gait and Posture tracked people with peripheral neuropathy using wearable sensors for seven consecutive days to measure their natural walking patterns. The findings were striking. People with nerve damage walked at approximately 0.81 meters per second compared to 0.88 meters per second in those with healthy nerves. That difference might sound small on paper, but think about what it means in real life. Walking across a parking lot takes you significantly longer. Your spouse or friends are always waiting for you to catch up. The reason isn't age or fitness level. Your damaged nerves are literally failing to send proper signals to your leg muscles. Those command messages from your brain telling your muscles to contract and lift your foot are getting delayed or scrambled along damaged nerve pathways. Studies from the University of Munich's German Center for Vertigo and Balance Disorders confirmed that slower walking speed isn't laziness or weakness. It's a protective compensation strategy. When your nervous system can't trust the sensory feedback from your feet and legs, it automatically slows you down to maintain control and prevent falls. Your body knows something is wrong even before your conscious mind does. Next, sign number two, shorter stride length and shuffling. Research published in the medical journal Brain from Oxford Academic documented that people with peripheral neuropathy consistently demonstrate reduced stride length, whether walking straight or in circles. Instead of a normal heel-to-toe rolling motion with full stride extension, steps become shorter and more cautious. Medical studies reveal this happens because nerve damage disrupts the coordination between your brain, spinal cord, and the plantar flexor muscles in your calves. Think of your normal walking stride like a car's engine firing on all cylinders. Each step involves precise timing, heel strike, weight transfer, toe push-off. When nerve signals fail, that smooth sequence falls apart. Your plantar flexors can't generate enough force to push off powerfully because the damaged nerves controlling them aren't firing correctly. A meta-analysis published in Frontiers in Endocrinology examined multiple research studies and confirmed that shortened stride length isn't primarily about muscle weakness. It's about nerve malfunction, disrupting the complex messaging system that coordinates walking. The result? You start shuffling. Your feet stay closer to the ground, you don't lift them as high between steps, and each stride covers less distance. To outside observers, you look like you're walking more carefully almost tentatively, as if testing uncertain ground. Next, sign number three, foot slap when walking. Listen to your footsteps. Do they make a distinct slapping sound when your foot hits the ground? 
According to the National Institute of Neurological Disorders, this audible foot slap is one of the most recognizable signs of nerve-related walking problems. The medical term is foot drop, and it happens when the deep peroneal nerve controlling your shin muscles malfunctions. Your tibialis anterior muscle, located on the front of your shin, is supposed to keep your foot flexed upward as you take each step. When the nerves controlling this muscle fail, your foot literally drops down and slaps the floor instead of landing in a controlled manner. Some people describe it as feeling like their foot is heavier than normal, or like wearing a weighted boot on one leg. StatPearl's medical reference describes foot drop as the inability to dorsiflex, meaning you can't lift the front part of your foot upward at the ankle. Without proper nerve signals, gravity takes over. Your foot dangles during the swing phase of walking, then slaps down when it makes contact with the ground. This isn't a muscle problem you can strengthen away with exercise. The nerve pathway itself is damaged and failing to transmit the electrical signals your muscles need to function normally. Next, sign number four, increased tripping and stumbling. Research published in the journal Parkinsonism and Related Disorders found dramatically elevated fall rates among people with peripheral neuropathy. One study documented that 50% of participants with nerve damage reported falls, compared to just 14% of those without nerve problems. The difference isn't clumsiness or carelessness, it's proprioception failure. Proprioception is your body's position awareness system. Specialized nerve receptors in your feet, ankles, and legs constantly send location and position data to your brain. This happens completely unconsciously, allowing you to walk without consciously thinking about where each body part is in space. When peripheral neuropathy damages these sensory nerves, that GPS system fails. You think you've lifted your foot high enough to clear that step or sidewalk crack, but the faulty nerve signals mean your brain has incorrect position information. Your foot catches and down you go. Research from the National Institutes of Health confirmed that peripheral neuropathy significantly increases fall risk because damaged nerves can't properly detect ground irregularities. That raised door threshold, that thick carpet edge, that small crack in the pavement, all become serious tripping hazards when your nervous system can't accurately sense and respond to them. The problem isn't your attention or coordination skills, it's nerve signal failure at the most fundamental level. Next, sign number five, wider stance when walking. Pay attention to the distance between your feet when you walk. Research published in Gait and Posture documented that people with peripheral neuropathy unconsciously adopt a wider base of support during walking. This isn't a conscious choice or a bad habit you've developed. It's an automatic compensation strategy your nervous system implements when sensory feedback from your feet becomes unreliable. Medical studies show this widened stance is your body's attempt to create more stability when it can't trust the position and balance information coming from your feet and ankles. Think of a tightrope walker spreading their arms wide for balance. Your body is doing the same thing with your legs, creating a broader base to prevent falls when nerve damage has compromised your balance control systems. The University of Munich research team found that this widened stance becomes even more pronounced under challenging conditions. When study participants with neuropathy walked slowly or closed their eyes, their stance width increased significantly compared to people with healthy nerves. The slower you walk, or the less visual feedback you have available, the wider your stance becomes as your nervous system desperately tries to maintain stability and prevent catastrophic falls that could result from unreliable nerve signaling. Next, sign number six, unsteady in darkness. Research from the German Center for Vertigo and Balance Disorders published in Gait and Posture revealed that people with peripheral neuropathy showed dramatically increased gait variability and balance problems when walking in darkness or with eyes closed. This finding exposes something critical about how nerve damage affects your balance systems. Your brain normally uses three separate systems to maintain balance, vision, your vestibular system in the inner ear, 
and proprioceptive feedback from nerves in your feet and legs. It's like a three-legged stool where all three supports work together to keep you stable. When peripheral neuropathy damages that third leg of the sensory nerve feedback system, your brain compensates by relying more heavily on vision to fill the gap. This compensation works reasonably well in bright light. You can use visual cues to help maintain balance even when nerve feedback is compromised. But take away the lights and suddenly you're trying a balance on only two systems instead of three. The research specifically measured how gait patterns deteriorated when participants walked with eyes closed, mimicking nighttime conditions. Steps became inconsistent, balance wavered, and fall risk increased substantially. That middle-of-the-night bathroom trip becomes genuinely dangerous when nerve damage has stolen one of your critical balance systems. Next, sign number seven, toe dragging and high stepping. The National Institute of Neurological Disorders identifies toe dragging as a clear indicator of nerve malfunction. When you can't properly lift the front part of your foot during walking, your toes scrape along the ground with each step. To compensate, you start lifting your knee higher than normal to clear your foot, a pattern doctors call steppage gait. Cleveland Clinic research confirms that peripheral neuropathies commonly cause this foot drop pattern. The problem stems from damage to either the deep perineal nerve or the L5 nerve root, both of which control the muscles responsible for lifting your foot upward. Without proper nerve signals, those muscles simply can't contract with enough force to raise your foot during the swing phase of walking. Stat Pearl's medical literature emphasizes that foot drop dramatically increases fall risk when your toe catches on carpet pile, doorway thresholds, or curbs you thought you'd cleared, falls become not just possible, but probable. Some people describe it as feeling like their shoe is loose or falling off, or like they're trying to walk with a floppy foot that won't respond properly to their intentions. The underlying cause isn't muscle weakness that exercise can fix, it's nerve damage preventing the electrical signals from reaching the muscles that need to contract. Next, sign number eight, poor balance on soft surfaces. Research published in Brain from Oxford Academic found that people with peripheral neuropathy showed significant balance difficulties during testing, especially when standing on foam surfaces with eyes closed. This finding reveals something important about how damaged nerves affect your stability systems. Your feet contain thousands of sensory receptors that detect pressure, texture, and surface variations. These receptors send constant feedback to your brain about what you're standing on. When you stand on a firm, hard surface, even damaged nerves can usually pick up enough information to help maintain balance. But place those same compromised feet on soft, unstable surfaces like foam mats, thick carpet or sand, and the already weak nerve signals become almost useless. The Oxford study tested participants in multiple conditions and consistently found worse balance outcomes for those with peripheral neuropathy, particularly on unstable surfaces. Why does this matter? Because it means everyday activities become potential fall hazards. Walking on grass, standing on bathroom rugs, stepping on soft ground, or standing on exercise mats all challenge your damaged nervous system beyond its compromised capabilities. What seems like a minor surface change to someone with healthy nerves becomes a serious stability threat when nerve damage has reduced the quality and quantity of sensory feedback your brain receives. Next, sign number nine, inconsistent step patterns. Research from gait and posture identified that increased stride-to-stride -stride variability was the strongest predictor of fall history in people with peripheral neuropathy. This technical term describes something straightforward. Your steps aren't consistent. One step might be longer, the next shorter. One stride wider, the next narrower. The rhythm and pattern of your walking becomes irregular and unpredictable. Healthy nerve function produces remarkably consistent walking patterns. Your brain and spinal cord coordinate thousands of precise muscle movements with every step, creating an almost rhythmic cadence. Think of a drummer keeping perfect time. When nerve damage disrupts this coordination, that rhythm falls apart completely. Studies published in Science Direct confirmed this gait variability isn't related to walking speed itself. It's caused by deficient sensory feedback control. 
your damaged nerves aren't sending consistent, reliable information about limb position and ground contact, so your brain can't coordinate consistent movements in response. The research found that gait variability became especially pronounced during slow walking, when people with neuropathy couldn't maintain step-to-step -step consistency. Why does this matter so much? Because inconsistent steps mean you can't reliably predict where your foot will land. That unpredictability directly translates to increased fall risk. When every step is slightly different, your brain can't develop the automatic patterns that keep walking safe and efficient. Here's what matters most. Early detection changes everything. Houston Methodist Research, published in 2024, emphasized that controlling the cause of neuropathy can slow damage to peripheral nerves and potentially reverse symptoms, but leaving the condition untreated leads to permanent nerve damage that cannot be reversed. The medical literature is absolutely clear on this point. If you recognized yourself in three or more of these warning signs, schedule a peripheral neuropathy screening with your doctor. The tests are straightforward. Nerve conduction velocity tests and physical examinations can detect early nerve damage before permanent injury occurs. Getting that diagnosis means you can address root causes like uncontrolled blood sugar, vitamin B12 deficiency, or other treatable factors before it's too late. The people who maintain mobility and independence into their 70s, 80s, and beyond are the ones who pay attention to these early warning signs. They don't wait for severe pain or complete numbness. They take action when walking patterns change. Type yes in the comments if you've noticed any of these changes in your walking. Share this video with anyone over 60 who you care about. Hit that like button so this potentially life-changing information reaches more people who desperately need to see it. Your walking pattern is talking. The question is, are you listening?